You're tuned into Life is a Sacred Journey. Every week, we bring a new perspective to aging and caregiving. Here is your host, Michelle Pope. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you out in the virtual land, the virtual community and neighborhood of Life is a Sacred Journey. It is such a honor and blessing and a fruit and life-giving for me to be able to come every Friday morning at 8 a.m. to see the sun come up um, with you and to be with you. It is also this week has been one of the most incredible weeks. Um, I've had some down moments. I've had moments of despair. But I have to tell you, when I heard the National Youth uh, Poet Lariat, Miss, Miss Gore McGurman, 22 years old, raised by a single mom, and that young lady strolled out there with that yellow coat on, giving them flash and pizzazz with her little, the red uh, turban thing on her natural hairdo. I was so proud. Yes, I'm proud of Kamala. And yes, I'm proud of, uh, of, of Michelle Obama. But they grown. They grown. I'm talking about a 22-year-old woman who could stand before America write a poem that was so profound and had the essence of uh, Nikki Giovanni, Toni Morrison, Maya Angelou, all of her ancestors, and she raised up her mother and said, I am could be president, but I'm here today reciting a poem, and it's because of the sacrifices of my mother. Yes. So single moms out there, I know it gets hard. Yeah. I was a single mom for over 20 something years, but don't give up hope. Amen. Don't give up the race. Invest in your children because yeah. you can raise fine children too. Don't yeah. believe the hype that only people that are raised with a mother and a father and in a perfect home are the only people that are healthy, wealthy, and wise because you know that is not so. Right. So. I dedicate this broadcast to all the single mothers, black, white, purple, green, Asian, everything that are out there living the struggle, keeping their families safe, right. guiding their children and creating what we saw, mm, what yes. we saw. And yes, yes, I'm proud that she was black, but she could have been Asian. She could have been whatever, because today what I'm talking about is single parenting. And that, to me, is something to raise up and say hallelujah about. So I'm so proud of you, young lady. And I have reached out to her to see if I could get her to come to Life is a Sacred Journey so we could honor her together. So lift that up and guide that through. Yes. The other thing is, I need to say this because I was in a meeting yesterday with some of my colleagues in Alameda County, and I'm gonna have Felicia cut this little piece out so we can send it to them. We were talking about the vaccine. One of my colleagues asked me to, and this was with the Senior Service uh, Coalition Advocacy Group, and they asked me to talk about why I took the vaccine. Many people know that I have said I would not take that vaccine for all the reasons that many of you are not aware of because you don't know about the medical apartheid that was afflicted upon people of color and Native Americans from the 1800s to this very day. And so the reality is I do. And I was very nervous about taking that vaccine. I walked in, I told my bishop and I told other people that I love, I went into the clinic once and I walked out and reschedule. I am phase one, tier one, and so to get the shot. I came home and I, I had a great discussion with my daughter and my son. And they were the reason that I turned around and then I also prayed, and I know some people don't like to hear that, but it is what I did and who I am. And I, I rescheduled and I went in and had the vaccine. Now, and my second shot is due in February. I am not telling anyone that they should go out and get the vaccine if you really, really have a value system and you morally feel that you cannot. 
because I have no right to tell anybody what to do. But I'm telling you, I did it for you, for the safety of, of other people. I did it because I need to keep my job and I work with elders and I don't want them to get sick or to pass anything on to them. But more importantly, I did it for my children because I love them and I would give my life for them. And so therefore taking the vaccine, if it meant taking my life, then there you go. So I wanted to share uh, because again, I know there are other people of color out there that are very worried about this vaccine, to take it, to not take it from all the historic stuff. I know, I know the history. So I honor what you're going through. But I want you to know as a leader in the Cal Nevada Conference of the United Methodist Church, as a leader here at Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay, and as a leader of my family, I made the decision with much discernment, much prayer, much research to take the, the, the vaccine. So I leave that with you and um, discern, do your homework, and please do what is best for you. And I'll keep you in my thoughts. Thank you so much. All right, I'm excited because I, my sister from another mother, I get to, you know, it's so fun when you meet people and you realize that we really are siblings, right? That we are siblings, but we don't grow up in the same families. Right. That, that no family could, could actually feed all of us and house all of us. So we have to be in little pockets of families. But when you're on the journey of life and you know that it's sacred, and you meet somebody and that resonates, that person's inner spirit resonates with you from the very beginning, you know you've met the sibling that was born from, to another mother. So Carolyn is one of those siblings for me. We met over a decade ago up in uh, Sacramento where we were both there for Senior Advocacy Day. I was asked to testify to the, the Committee on Health and Human Services and I was waiting for my time to speak and um, having to go to the bathroom <laughs> at the same time. I had to get up and run to the bathroom. And this beautiful woman, I heard this voice behind me that the, the sound of it and the octave of her voice is so granular and wonderful that I had to turn. And she said, Miss Pope, I'd like to talk to you with you. I said, well, come on, girlfriend. Let's have a meeting in the ladies' room because I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and we go in the bathroom. We start talking. We start talking about advocacy, her work, my work. And the next thing I know, she's on the board of Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay. She is an, still remains an advisor to us um, and supports us in every way and every ask. And she is an author. She had a health challenge. And where I also resonate with her, she had a health challenge. And she decided she was going to do her whole own homework, become holistic about her approach of care for herself, and became a bodybuilder. Not just became a bodybuilder, but also won medals and awards for it at an age where most people would think that you cannot do that. And then profoundly wrote about her relationship with her father, her pastor father, who she was a caregiver for, but yet had a traumatic experience through, during her caregiving because of family challenges and all kinds of things and wrote a glorious testimony to that part of the adventure of her life. Then she moved on to write about health and, and all of those things. But I'm going to read some of this just because I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing just because what I know from, from our heart language together. But let me read a little bit of this because I want you to know Miss Carolyn Brent is, is a queen. And, and she has really come forth and said, I'm going to live out my call and help other people by sharing my life story. Not because she's trying to make a whole bunch of money and live in the big old house, but she's really trying to pass on what um, gifts have been given to her. So Carolyn's life path mission is to help individuals and caregivers discover their sense of personal strength in preparing for the future. Her research and extensive collection of public, published works have made her a notable figure in her field. AARP is after her. You can find her on television. She's constantly being seen. I mean, all of it. Carolyn's most impressive accomplishments is her vast body of work 
and the award-winning and best-selling The Caregiver's Companion, Caring for Your Loved One Medically, Financially, and Emotionally. And while Caring for Yourself First and Second Editions are in the Library of Congress, the university libraries at Harvard, Stanford, and John Hopkins, and numerous other medical centers and universities of higher learning. Designated as Editor's Choice, Carolyn's book received a review of excellent by the Library Journal, which any of you who know about the Library Journal, it, that is really hard to get. <laughs> they're, they're, they're very critics. They're critical about books, and so should they be. On January 26, Carolyn will launch officially the revised edition of her best-selling book, The Caregiver's Companion, Caring for Your Loved One Medically, Financially, and Emotionally While Caring for Yourself. In this extensive guide, Carolyn outlines a step-by-step -step process so caregivers know what to do and what to ask in every situation that may arise. The topics that have brought, been broadly revised and updated information include crucial financial, legal, COVID, so the pandemic's been added, planning checklists for long-term care. Millennials are stepping into caregiving responsibilities. I'm really excited about that hospice care, self-care, eight steps of dealing and incorporating meditation into self-care. I am honored that I know that in her book, there's pieces of me in there because I saw it. <laughs> I'm so excited that, um, that she wrote pieces of me in that in her book and 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 our relationship together as far as our work together and so it is my honor to uh present to you again my siblings out there in virtual land uh carolyn a brent welcome carolyn thank you i'm, I'm honored to be here and thank you so much when i hear an introduction like that it's hard for me, me to believe that you're talking about me but right yeah, you're thank you so much. I appreciate it, Michelle. Oh, I'm honored to be here. Well, I'm sorry we can't see you this morning. Is your camera off? On oh, my, cam my camera's off. Hold on. There you are. Oh, Magnifico. Magnifico. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Carolyn A. Brent. Ta-da! <laughs> so... Kara, I want to, uh, first of all, give people a little bit of history for those are, that are new and joining us this morning that may not have met you in our past broadcast uh, back, in, back in the past and, and our most recent one. Will you just share a little bit about what brought you to this place where you are sharing your life journey? Um, and I know it was caregiving, but share, share with the, the rest of our audience. And I apologize for the bus. Well, you know what, Michelle, the way that I got started being a caregiver, and that was when caregiving, no one even thought of a caregiver being even a human being. They just figured, you know, it, it's just a job for them. But when you are a caregiver, and a family caregiver, especially back when I was a caregiver, I didn't get paid. I did it strictly for love. So what has gotten me to where I am today, being a caregiver for 12 years with no help, and there's, at the time there were seven siblings that were still alive at the time. Three, three has passed since then. Mm -hmm. Nobody helped me. But as soon as they thought my father was on his deathbed, all of a sudden, me, the caregiver, I was attacked by my family with a, fr a frivolous lawsuit of elder neglect, elder abuse, you name it. I went through that in three different courts, and it's, it's called um, a vexatious litigation, a person going to court just to drag you through, through the court to get what they want. So all the time, my twin sister took me to court. She would drop the charges but go to another county with the same, the same problems. And uh, that happened to me three times. And at the very last time it happened, and I couldn't see my father, by the way. I, and I never knew when my father died. I never saw him again because if I saw him, I would take the risk of going to jail. And I asked God and I asked my father's spirit, how could this happen to someone that loved their parents so much? You talk about single mothers today, but let's say there's single dads out there. Amen. My father yeah. was a single man that raised me from 12 to 18 years old. And he literally 
poured into me the word of God step by step by step, every step of the way, because he kept saying, Carolyn, one day I'm not going to be here with you. And I thought, you know, when dad was, I was 18 years old and he'd say, I'm not going to be with you. I just thought, you know what? You're going to be with me forever. I was in denial thinking that someday my parent was going to die. And that happened that day. When this, you know, later on, but this is what carried me through. And this is what will carry your kids through. When your parents pour into you, they're pouring and pouring. And guess what? It's in that file cabinet in our head. And we remember what mama said or daddy said to get us through. So I had to reach, and I know this is not a religious uh, stance, but I do have to share this. I had to reach to God to help me. So that's when I got off of my pity party self victimized bed. And I said, no more. I am going to go and make a difference. I'm going to let the caregivers know you're not alone. There's people like Michelle. Michelle, that's why I love you. When you got on on, on the stand and you started really advocating for caregivers, yes. that's why I tracked you down. And I've been tracking you down since then because I love, I mean, there is it's rare that you really find a true advocate. Nowadays, here it is 2021. Everybody's getting into uh, fitness and caregiving. But I look at what's your history? What's yeah. your story? Do you have a story? I have a story. I never knew when my daddy died or where he was buried. I just discovered where he was buried in 2020 because my father's spirit said, do not look for me, my gravesite until the laws are changed. Michelle, I went back to California in 2019. I remember knocking on the doors with the legislators with the same old story. But then my father's spirit came to me again and said, Carolyn, you've done your work. Your work is worldwide, globally. People don't have to pay for it to go and buy your book. They could go to the library and check it out. So it's available to them. You've done your work, my good and faithful servant. So then I discovered where my father was buried. And it's, it's, it's in Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace was the last book I, I wrote, but it's in Amazing Grace. I actually know where my father's buried. Uh, I thank God I know where he's buried. I've put closure to that. And I tell my father in his spirit, thank you for pouring into me when I was a child yes. and into me when I was a young woman. And in regards to health, I with caregivers, Caregivers, I, I actually wrote a little note here because I find this is coming out of my, my new book. And caregivers in a 19 uh, uh, Cornell study, 34% of the caregivers, guess how they cope? They cope with alcohol. They cope with over-the-counter drugs. They cope, that's how they cope. Yeah. And I'm going like, I know I used to cope like that too, Michelle. Uh, so I'm letting people know that was me. That's how I coped. Get a glass of wine and it makes you just feel good. And then the next day you're getting another glass of wine and the next and the next. Pretty soon it's like you're using the wine or using whatever you're using just to cope because it's a hard job. So that is why the library, the, uh, the library journal gave me excellent because I shared my really horrible story but I also shared how I got out of it. That's why I share the step by steps and letting caregivers know you're not by yourself. There are so many books out there, not only just by me, but there's other great books out there as well. But I believe I was born to do what I'm doing, helping caregivers, families, relationships, uh, the healthcare professionals. I was born to do this and Michelle, I will do it until God calls me home to Jesus. Yeah. I will do this for the rest of my life. And that's why my work has been so successful because it's real. I'm not stealing it from anyone. And we know about stealing or copying it. It's the true, authentic, uh, horrible stuff that I've gone through. Yeah. But we have choices, Michelle. We could either stay in that uh, stinking, thinking pity pot or yeah. you get up and do something for someone else. And when you do, when I do something for someone else and help them, Michelle, it feeds my soul. It, right? it just, oh, it's I the most it. rewarding thing. 
you could, I mean, I, so I love giving, I love sharing. And also, Michelle, you are part of my village and I share with caregivers, especially, you have to create a village and your village is people that love you, not for what you could do for them. It's people that love you when you're up, love you when you're down, love you when you want to just, you know, when you're depressed and they understand and they help you, help you, help you. Michelle, I recently called on you. You're part of my village. I said, Michelle, I need you. I, I'm dealing with identity theft. Can you please do an affidavit? Guess what? You did it. Thank you, Michelle, because it's my village yep. that I yep. count on. And well, yeah, Stu and you Herman know. is a part of our village. Uh, Mary Lynn Capel. I mean, we have a uh, Renee Dawn. All these people are a part. Uh, Stephanie, uh, for a, a part of our village yeah. because we're all trying to in our in our own little vortex of living change just the trajectory a little bit yeah. and and that's why we have all connected we are all basically yeah. telling a story as you just outlined of what it means to live out life because if we live out life to the very end you will care for somebody absolutely, that's, absolutely. that is it i mean one of my best friends before i met you her name was debbie Debbie Ravinko, um, and she and I had, had raised our kids together and we met dropping our sons off at the daycare. So that's 32 something years ago, right? And she got cancer mm -hmm. when um, my son was, when Jade was just born. And there was a group of us, the village, yeah. that surrounded her and stayed with her and um, she died in my arms. And mm -hmm. the reality is that was the, that's the promise. Yeah. That's the promise of friendship, the real friendship, yeah. not not the friendships that, you know, that, that other stuff that people are calling friends. That's not <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the friendships, like you said, when when, you know, you need uh, just even someone to talk to. That person is there because it's not about always exchanging things. Right. It's about ch exchanging the spirit and the soul and and all of that. And that is profound. Yeah, a village is key. I think if people strive more for creating a village and do more self-care instead of just running after money and running after stuff and trying to get this immediate gratification, they'll live a healthier, richer life, period, if they do self-care. And I'm speaking of self-care emotionally for yourself, where okay. you have to block out M Michelle, you taught me this about six years ago or seven years ago. You said, Caroline, I got rid of my television. Yeah. And you told me your why. And then what I did, I said, well, you know, Michelle's my sister. She said that, you know, she doesn't need all that noise and stuff in her, in her life. I did the same thing six years ago. I do not own a television. And I got to tell you, I filter whatever comes into my orbit. It's filtered. It's what feeds my soul, not what the latest stinking, thinking newscast is going to put in. <laughs> you know, and I use that in my books. In all my books, I say negative thinking, stinking people. Get rid of them and do yourself a favor. Be happy and rejoice when you get rid of the negative stinking, thinking people. Because when you put positively a wonderful people in your life, not people to placate you. I, I need people in my life that's going to tell me the truth. Caroline, no, you can't do that. Caroline, no, this is the way you do it. That's what the village is all about. People that can be true and act in truth. Even the uh, publishing companies, and I say companies. I hear you. My village too. Yeah. I wrote yeah. the first book, Why Wait? Then I, I got another book deal. Now I don't have to knock on their door with this last book uh, um, that's coming up like next week. Yes, January 26th. They knocked on my door and said, Kelly, could you please do us a favor? Because Harlequin had got given it to another company. They said, do you mind you know, uh, revising it? I said, I would love to for one reason. I listened to the caregivers. They told me what was missing in my first book. They said, Carolyn, talk more about the spiritual. Put that, so the spiritual's in my book. Yeah. COVID and how to cope with COVID. If you have a, a, a parent in a nursing home 
This is how you cope with it. You got to create a village within that nursing home. Be nice to whomever you're talking to on the phone, send them cookies, do what you got to do what you got to do when it comes to your mom and dad. I was so, going to ask you about that. So, so the, the, what you, in your conversations and, and in the book, you've created a checklist that yes. the COVID pandemic and that the intent of that was to help families connect with their loved ones in long-term care facilities during COVID. So I talk about that a little bit more because I, I think that's pivotal because we're gonna be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, loved ones, but we're gonna be in this pandemic for the year of 2021. Yeah, we are. We are. So, so, so let's just hunker down. We, we're gonna have to keep wearing masks. We're, it's, gonna, it's just gonna be, so, you know, so. Let's figure out. So Carolyn, tell them some of the things that you put in that checklist, because I think that's important because where people are starting to feel like, I know I, okay, let me be transparent. Yeah. I'm feeling that way because I have a, a person that I want to go visit and I cannot. And it's because they are in a rehab center and um, getting rehab after, after a major situation. And, and I can't, and that is killing me. Um, so tell, tell me, tell me some of the things on your checklist that I could do well, that might take that away. The, well, the number one thing that I share with everyone, cause I talk to caregivers all the time, they get really frustrated. So then they're mean to the staff members. That's something you don't want to do. You yeah. want the step, you want to create a village within that organization, find out who the top person is, have a, a conversation with them on the telephone, if you want to send a box of cookies or even make a donation, it things like that, it's the little things. And I know, I know, uh, Michelle, it sounds transparent, but you know what? That's the world we live in. And I keep it true. You got to find yourself, you know, a, a village on the inside. Although you can't get inside, you could still talk on the phone. Yes. You can still, you know, send some things and you'll be amazed. When you create a village on the inside, you'll be able to see your loved one even from the window because they'll make sure that the, the, they could, you know, uh, put the, your, the patient in a wheelchair or, or have them at a window where you could just peek in and you could wave. Yep. That's the number one thing that I share. Then I tell folks, you got to listen to the CDC. You have to know what their guidelines are, what they're saying when they're saying stay away. It hurts us. It hurts the parents that they can't see their loved yeah, ones, yeah. but you're really protecting your loved ones. If you, I had to learn to change my attitude because my father, he's, it wasn't a COVID or anything, but it was the scabies. And I couldn't see my father for a month because of quarantine yeah. with scabies. So I had to change my attitude to know like, is my dad okay? So I, I, I created relationships. So that's really, really key. I listened and I always looked at the, the data, looked at the science, very, very important. So yeah. if a person does that, then they feel like they're contributing, especially when you create, and I'm going to keep saying it, a village on the inside of a hospital. I broke my wrist. I have a scar right here. Oh, you do. I broke it last year. During COVID, I mean, I'm going, dear God, what else is going to happen mm -hmm. during COVID? And I had to have emergency surgery during COVID. And of course, I plead the blood of Jesus that I wouldn't catch COVID. But afterwards, when I got out, I sent food to the staff members for taking fabulous care of me because right. I want them to know I, uh, people are not just takers. We want to give to them yeah. just giving a little it goes a long way because, you know, they're caregivers too. People yeah. in the hospitals, if you look at them, that they're caregivers just like we are, then if we treat them with kindness, respect, and love, they're going to help you with your loved one. That's right. But that right. is a guarantee. Yep, that's, that's a guarantee. guarantee. Please hit that share button. We're not quite done yet, so we still have time for people to join the conversation. We, of course, Felicia will do her magic and we will drop it into all the mediums that we are at. But please share that, share the hit the share button and have more people join this conversation while we still have some more time with uh, Carolyn Brent. So Carolyn, um, tell us about the eight steps to dealing with uh, caregiver stress. This is also revised in the book. 
updated a little bit. And so uh, tell us about that. You don't have to disclose all of them because we do want you to go to the library or uh, purchase the book, whatever you, however you, you need to get it. But the good news is yeah. by Carolyn really working with the uh, Congress of the Library Congress, you are able to get her book for free. And that is a blessing because, you know, I buy them because I like to have them and I write in them and I share stuff. And, um, but, but being able to go to the library is a really good thing. And for those of you who um, can still get out and do that, um, or you can call in and, and go and pick it up, uh, or you can also uh, is, I get it online. Um, and so there's so many, you can go to Carolyn's website, which is magnificent and figure out where, uh, you know, all her books. Let's make 2021 the year that we plan for what might happen. Right, right. Plan for it like it's going to happen. Amen. And that way you're prepared. And no, and we will never always be prepared. Like, I think I have everything in my earthquake kit. Well, I cleaned it out the other day and I realized I don't have everything in my earthquake kit. So you constantly have to keep yeah. going back and researching. So that's what Carolyn did with this book in this revision. So steps to dealing with caregiver stress. I know our caregivers are stressed right now more than yeah. ever because shelter yeah. place. Yes. Well, you know what? I'm going to just go through the steps really, really quick. Oh, good. Okay. Beautiful. First of all, a person that we, human beings, we have to transform our thinking. We have to get that negative stuff out of our mind. Instead of telling ourselves what we can't do, you got to find solutions and try, try to find ways to, to cope with whatever you're dealing with. Because remember, I have chronic back pain that I deal with on a daily basis. I could be a drug addict, but I've chosen not to do the drugs. And some people do, but I know that my family has a history of drug addiction. So I stay away from it because I could, could do that. So you have to transform your thinking. Then we cannot normalize stress. We can't say, well, you know, dad is really feeling good today. But you know what? Instead of enjoying hit, hit your mom or dad feeling good, we're thinking, well, I, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna get that next phone call, so I'm, I can't enjoy it because you know this is not gonna last. Good things don't last forever. I found myself thinking that way, like, oh, when is the next shoe gonna drop? Versus, let's rejoice for the moments that we have. The other one, mm. is you have to plan for the unexpected. I share with caregivers. Have yourself your list of, of uh, village people on your refrigerator, who to call if, you, if you're if you sick. Michelle, you're part of that village that I have. So you, I hope you don't get a phone call. I don't want to get it but, yet. But, but the key thing, they know, you know who I am, what I stand for. So everybody got to have the village. Even on your driver's license, have a person that you could call that, that's in your driver's license that the state could call for just in case you get into a car wreck and you're in the hospital. It'll be in the, da the data. That's really, really important. Select healthy coping skills. Yeah. Now, what I do for coping skills, because I was just recently stressed out because of identity theft, yeah. I go on long walks on the ocean. That's where I get mine. You got to figure out where do you meditate? exercise d are you eating healthy and michelle we both know this you look fabulous 10 pounds lighter i see it yeah. all the way from florida three thousand miles away i see it but the key thing is that we have to especially after the age of 60 yeah. watch what you eat put good nutritional foods in your body get rid of the nitrates and the this trait and that trait because i've noticed the older i get the harder it is for me and we have to quit giving ourselves an excuse for not taking care of our bodies mm -hmm. i i i go i work out it's like brushing my teeth it's something that you just have to do you got to figure out a way to work out there's free videos online there's oh no excuse oh, yes there's yeah. no excuse so that's number five number six is you know keep keep balance we got to keep balance in our life 
keep balance. You can't just, just work all the time and not have some play time. Get on a, a, you know, a video call with one of your friends and just, you guys could talk, just do whatever that you got to do to push back. Um, what really keeps me balanced, believe it or not, writing. Because when I ha went through all of my trauma, losing my father, I went to a, a psychologist for three solid years for one hour every week, it turned into my happy hour. Well, going to Dr. Nathan Hare, he's in San Francisco. He changed my life. That's why I'm a writer. He said, Carolyn, let's not talk about the negative. Let's journal and let's talk about your future. What do you, can you do for caregivers? That's what I did. Eight books later, I'm still writing. And I think that, I thank God, people think that when you're going through stress, you can just figure it out on your own. Sometimes caregivers... You got to seek professional guidance and professional yes, help. And yes, don't be afraid because Dr. Hare, I wouldn't be the woman I am right now if it wasn't for someone that cared enough that said, you have a lot of talents in you. Let's focus in on that. Then uh, acknowledge your choices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Confession, everyone. I want you to know this. I've been married three times, three times. People don't know that about me, but I wrote it in in uh, both of the, my latest two books. And they're going, well, Carolyn, something's wrong with you. You've married three times. What's your problem? And I, I acknowledge I made wrong choices. I don't blame the men that I marry. I made wrong choices. So here I am. I'm 64 years old. I could be married if I want to or date, but I have made a choice that my mission is my purpose that defines my soul. So I love what I'm doing. So ladies, if you feel like you just got to have a man, you got to make the right choice that's going to fit into your lifestyle. It's all about choices. Mm. Then I, the last one, the eighth one, discover your rainbow. What oh. kind of glasses are you what, looking through? Discover your rainbow. And Michelle, when I discovered my rainbow, I could take the ugliest situation and turn it into something positive, like my identity theft. Yeah. Like, okay, Dirk, I'm, I'm going to write another book. Not a problem. Thank you, Jesus. Now I know what to put in it because I've, I've gone through it myself. Yes. But I asked God this and said, Dear God, please don't give me any more, you know, hands-on experience. I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. But, you know, I've learned so much through this process. But what I've really learned, and, I, and I'm going to bring it back home, I've learned that my village was there for me when I needed my village. You can't walk this world, in this world by yourself. You've got to have your village. Just like Michelle said, we are sisters that grew up in different households, different experiences, but our paths cross. That's with our passion at legislation, helping others. Michelle, you could have been someplace else on the planet, but she oh, wasn't. Not I could have been someplace else. And yeah. I tell you, I will live my life, live my life writing. I've learned to love writing. There's going to be a movie out with all of these different conversations that we're having. Thank God, because people need, some people are visual, some people could yeah, hear it, me, yeah. but then on the big screen or lifetime, they'll see it. And the, the bottom line is this, I never gave up hope on me. Mm. That's what people got to do. You can't give up on yourself. You can't throw in the towel and go, I'm 50 years old, so let me just be that. No, you got to fight it. I had one uh, professional that I love very dearly. She said, Carolyn, I, I, I'm trying to exercise and I try to eat right, but it's really hard. And guess what I told her? I agreed with her. I said, you're right. It is hard. But if you keep doing it, it becomes habit. Once yeah. it's a habit, yeah. your body feels good. And th Michelle, 64 years old, I still I have my biceps. I, I know. Biceps and I will do it. Yeah. And so God calls me home. It's my responsibility to take care of myself. It's your responsibility, caregivers out there. You have to take that one hour. You deserve one hour to do whatever it is you have to do for self-care. Yes. Do it every single day and don't let that go. Don't let anybody in your one hour space. Right. That's right. Yes. That's for you. 
I love that because that's exactly, again, I, I, um, I've been now since we last spoke. So it's been about nine months. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, in, and it took, I, I wasn't, I had no grandiose, like I'm going to lose this much or that much. I didn't set any kind of goals like that. It wasn't even about that. The, the ultimate goal was what Carolyn um, wrote in her book was to get healthy to understand the needs of my body and how it had changed because I've been a pretty healthy person and, and weight was never an issue for me in my lifetime until I started getting older and going through menopause and all of that. And then all of a sudden I started doing this yo-yo thing and I'm like, what is that? Then I realized from um, Carolyn's book that there are certain things that I used to be able to eat that my body no longer metabolizes very well because she talks about body shape. There's three, oh, <laughs> three basic body shapes as well as your blood, um, you know, what your blood type is. These things and how you metabolize food and, and different things. Like I never knew that a tomato is really not good for your gut. Who well, go figure. You know, I grew up eating tomatoes. <clears throat> but they're bad for my gut now. Peanuts. Ah, sheesh. I grew up eating peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter by itself, <laughs> peanut butter on the spoon, <laughs> finger in the peanut butter. I love peanut butter. <laughs> but now, can't eat the peanut butter. So you, you, you find out little by little because you, I don't eat peanut butter as much as I used to. So as you experience it, pay attention. That's what I learned from, from you, Carolyn. Pay attention to how your mind, because if you, if you eat something or drink something and uh, 45 minutes later, you're feeling disconnected and fuzzy, yeah. that's what you put in your body <laughs> that made that happen. It's, it, that's just what it is. It's, it's real. Yeah. Or your stomach, and then you find that you're not going to the bathroom enough and, mm -hmm. and whatever, that created that. So yeah. I started, where is it? Because she advised in the book. This is my health journal. Yeah. And so in my health journal, again, I'm not tracking everything that I eat. I'm not doing Noom. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. But what I'm doing is tracking how food makes me feel. Uh -huh. And then I'm tracking, am I eating because I'm having an emotional moment? Yeah. Or am I eating because I'm really hungry? Yeah. And that I now oh, finally got it. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> food is fuel. Yes. Now, yeah. doesn't mean you can't enjoy it, because yeah. don't get it twisted. I'm enjoying everything that I'm eating. <laughs> but I'm not just eating because the clock ding, ding, and that is the time that traditionally people want me to eat. Right. I'm not doing that. I eat when my body tells me it needs fuel, yeah. and then I put good fuel in, and then I'm fasting. I mean, and as I said to some people earlier this morning in another video that I made, not everybody can fast. So I'm not telling you to go out and start starving yourself because that's what most people think fasting is. Okay. But, but you can fast from some of the negative thinking that is creating what uh, your inability, what did you say, Carolyn? Your inability to discover your rainbow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can fast from that. Yeah. I fast three times a week or if not more, sometimes I just don't, I don't feel like eating. So I don't eat unless yeah. I really need to eat. And yeah. so that, that may mean that a day will go by and I haven't eaten, but it doesn't mean I haven't put nutrition in because yeah. I, I'm a juicer now yeah. also. So, so all these things, good people, yeah. we're not asking, see, this is where we, the world is just messed. Carolyn. <laughs> The world has jacked up the way we think and how we hear, okay? Yeah. I am not telling you to become Carolyn. Yeah. I am not telling you to become me. One, right. you can't. Right, right. I am a unique individual. She is a unique individual, and so are you. Amen. But what we're saying is find out who you are without all that garbage that everybody has told you you are, and now you're living out that reality and you're dying because of it. Amen, amen. 
You're dying in your mind, you're yeah. dying in your body, and you're dying in your soul because yeah. you're living out something that is not real. Yeah. Chasing something. I mean, I, I listen to these young women talking and they're chasing bodies. Those aren't real bodies. That's a Barbie doll. Right, right. That's right. not a real person and it never has been and it never will be. Right, right. Yes. So, the pandemic, yes. Carolyn, yes. has made us sit down and revisit who I, we are even walking on this planet. Yes. And, and I thank you yes. for carrying me when I didn't know that this is what I was created for. When I ran from this because I was worried about what other people were thinking and saying about me doing this, now people are copying me doing this. Oh, yeah. I get it. I get it. I, I get it. You're singing to the choir, Michelle. <laughs> and these are people who don't even like me. Yeah, I get For it. For real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's how the universe works, good yeah. people. You do what you're called to do, and, yeah. it, and it just unfolds for you. And you don't have to worry about the naysayers, the yeah. people that have lied about you, like Carolyn Brent has gone through in her life, the people who want to talk about you negatively, negative in a negative way, because your light scares the hell out of them. Yes, yes. You don't have to do that. You just walk in your own truth. Yes. And shine in your own shine. And yes. then people yes. like, then, then I'll be able to find you. Yes. Because then you're my sibling. Yeah. yeah. Your Carolyn will be able to find you because yes. you're her sibling. Yeah. Carolyn, yes. I, I just want you to tell this virtual family, our virtual siblings who we have not met yet, that one day we will meet at the great family reunion. Will you give them, show them the book or, or tell them how to get the book? It drops on January 26th. It's a, it's a guide so they can write in it and, and, and just give, the, give them a last little brouhaha about, about your book. The one key, sorry, there's a little, I have my window open. Now I have a visitor visiting me, you know, that oh, I don't want. Oh, nature, I love nature. <laughs> the key thing is take responsibility. I'm not on Michelle's show to peddle a book. We both said you could go to a library, download it for free. It's not even about money. It's about getting wisdom. I, I've allowed the haters in my life, the naysayers, the thieves, they've made me the woman that I am today. They've made me. They were my fuel to keep going. <laughs> so regardless of what you're going through, let that be your fuel. Do not let nobody stop you. And in the Caregiver Companion, this is actually, it's the second edition. I heard the caregivers, they told me what they needed and they wanted, and it's in the book. Plus, everything's revised from, from all the dollars that, that a person has to invest in to, to caregiving. You name it, everything's updated. But invest in your mind. Read the book. Read it. Because I have to say, it's an important piece of work. If someone wants to copy off of what I've written, Go to it because it's my story in there. If someone wants to pretend they have a twin sister or a twin brother, go to it because there's nothing like original. Right. So be your right. original self. Right. Do self-care. You are your own advocate. You've got to take care of you. That's what I want to tell all my caregiving communities. That's what I want to tell the professional healthcare providers that aren't going to be listening that's what I want to tell the extended family members. Take care of yourself. COVID's out here. It's real. You don't want to be in a hospital with, on a ventilator going, oh, I really wish I would have read Carolyn's book. Read the book. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Take care of your loved ones. Yeah. If you can't see your loved one, then you have to do Zoom. There's all kind of free stuff that you've got to figure out another way for safety. Yes. So that's really all I want to say. I, I just praise God that you've allowed me to be on your show. And I'm oh, Carol. The passion that's in me. It just keeps spewing out because I believe. Yes. And what I'm saying. 
Yeah. I want to shake people and say, don't you get it? Can't you, can't you see this? Look at the rainbow. The rainbow. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Let, let me put my rainbow glasses on. <laughs> My rainbow glasses. You see the color? Yeah, yeah, the I rainbow, see it. The rainbow. <laughs> you know, so I do look through my rainbow glasses when yes. things are ugly and sticky and nasty in my life. I always go, there got to be a rainbow behind this. Yes, yes. And I get out of my funk and I'll call my village, someone in my village, and they help me to snap out of it. And I'm on my way writing again. Right. That's right. That's right. And then... It's important to believe oh, in oh, you. Yes. To believe yes. in you. Yes. Yes. I believe in a higher power. So I start there. But I believe in me. Yes. I will not let anything get in the way of my belief in me. Yes. Amen. And so believe in you. Believe yes. that you are beautiful. Yes. Believe you are perfect just the way you are. You can do all of this and get and get more perfection, but you are perfect right now. Right. Right. And believe that this world is yes. going to be a better place because you yes. are going to do one thing to change the trajectory of who you are. Yes. And lift yourself up to a higher place. As I said to my daughter uh, who moved down to San Diego and she asked me to pray for her and her comrades as they were leaving at 4 a.m. in the morning uh, last week. And I went out and I prayed and on the van <laughs> that they were driving that it wouldn't break down. And then I grabbed my daughter and held her so close, heart to heart, and I prayed to the God above yes. that nothing would happen to her. Yes. But what I said to her was walk in your truth. Yes. I don't care how many parties you go to. I don't care who you're around, but walk in your truth. Yes. And then I will not worry about you mm -hmm. because I know you will be living out the example that you have been taught. Amen. I miss her, yes, but I'm not worried about her yes. because I believe I planted the right seeds. Yes, yes. And it starts with you. So have a wonderful weekend, Carolyn. Thank you for joining Life is a Sacred Journey. You are an amazing human being. The world is better because you were born and because you're in it. So thank you so much. Thank stay, you. Stay right there while I say goodbye to my virtual family. Virtual family, <laughs> you are loved. You are loved whether you know it or not. <laughs> and you are already living out something that is yet to come. Yes. Be in awe of it. Live in the wonder of it. Smile, laugh, be joyous. Yes. Be passionate about something. And don't care about what other people think. Yes, yes. We love the other people who have all the thoughts about us. Yes. But at the end of the day, your worth is not going to be through the minds of any other people. Yeah. Your worth on this planet is what you leave behind and how you've made people feel. Thank you, Maya Angelou. That's mm -hmm. your worth. Mm -hmm. So be in peace. Yes. Hug yourself. Oh, hug yourself. If you can wrap it all around, hug yourself. Remember we used to do this when we were kids and then turn around? <laughs> but, so, but hug yourself, okay? Yeah, hug yourself. Be willing to make a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Be willing to laugh at yourself. Yeah. Be willing to understand you are not perfect. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. Because you're still perfect. Yeah. Even in spite of it. So have a wonderful day and thank you for joining us at Life is a Sacred Journey. Please hit the share button, call somebody, share it with somebody, eat the meat, throw away the bones. Yeah. We were, nothing here was meant to offend anyone. We're just sharing our wisdom and sharing our journey with you. And peace, peace and peace. Find peace today. Take time to the, enjoy the great outdoors. Goodbye, virtual family. See you Bye. next week. <laughs>